the Boston Tea Party is very exciting. Those of you who know something about American history, and I wrote a copy of a study guide that I give to the students because they normally don't know European history. And if you don't know European history, how can you understand, you know, the British? How can you understand the British? Can you hear me? Can you hear me if I talk loud? Yeah. 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 So if you don't know European history, you do not understand that the British and the French were fighting each other or the English and the French for a thousand years, right? Uh, from 1066 onward. And one series of wars occurred in the 1700s. So you have the War of the Spanish Succession where you have um, the English British fighting to keep the French from controlling France and Spain, and the French lose. So this was a defeat for the army of Louis the 14th, the first big defeat, and that is, of course, John Churchill and the Battle of Blenheim. Okay, so the French gave up a little territory in the colonies, um, Acadia, and that produces that poem Evangeline about leaving Acadia, going south. But then there is a really big war that begins when George Washington is sent west of the Allegheny Appalachian Mountains to tell the French that they are not supposed to be claiming Fort Duquesne, that that territory belongs to the British, okay? And there is a skirmish which actually starts what is later known as the French and Indian War it's known in Europe as the Seven Years War because it lasted seven years over there. Nine years here, seven years there. It ends in 1763. The British have won that war. So great, they get a lot of land, but what do they also get? Debt, they get a lot of debts. And they decide it's time for the colonists to start paying some direct taxes. So they put in place a series of direct taxes and the colonies start pushing back, like the Sugar Act and then the Stamp Act, which generates a lot of protest, and then the Townsend Acts. So the Townsend taxes, lead, paint, paper, glass, tea. And there is protest. Parliamentarians have never come to the colonies. They don't really understand what the protest is all about. They think it's fine for the colonists to begin paying taxes. But colonists actually start boycotting British goods. So the merchants are saying to the parliamentarians, get rid of these taxes. So they agree to except for the tax on tea. And tea by that time is really a primary beverage. The English had a campaign really in the 1700s to get people to switch from drinking gin to drinking tea. You would drink gin instead of water because there was no safe water, right? right? But if you made tea, you had to boil the water and then you could add tea. And of course, if you were British, you could sail around to India and get the tea. So that's what the British East India Company was doing. Sailing to India, getting a lot of tea but they had a lot of surplus on their hands and they were not doing well financially. So in 1773, Parliament passed the Tea Act, which was going to allow the British East India Company to import its tea. So bring its ships to the coast, import its tea without really having to collect uh, duties without their having to pay, the tax would still be on the tea for the colonists, but the company would not be paying import duties, and that would reduce the cost of the tea because the British would not be paying import duties. And colonists got really upset about this because it seemed like a sneaky way to get them to keep paying that tea tax and the British were going to have less expensive tea, so that would cut out the French and maybe the Dutch. So there were protests in different places, and especially in Boston, because what do we know about the establishment of Boston? That goes all the way back to the Puritans, a thousand who arrived in 1629, 1630, 
Yes, they wanted to worship freely, but they also wanted to make money as merchants. Many of them were merchants. Fast forward to the time that the T Act is in place and you have a merchant like John Hancock, you've heard of him, correct? Who made a lot of money as a merchant. So he's furious about the fact that most of those taxes have been repealed, but not the tax on tea. And now the British East India Company has special privileges to import its tea. So I'm going to share with you all a handout. I don't think I made enough copies, but maybe some of you can make copies and give to other members and, and guests. George R.T. Hughes, a retrospective of the Boston Tea Party. So as I'm always reminding the students, we can only reconstruct the past if we have primary source documents from the past that tell us exactly what happened. So here's a person who in 1834 is remembering the role he played in the Boston Tea Party in 1773. <laughs> Maybe remembering and adding a little bit to it, right? You will see when you read it. Uh, interesting account. <coughs> but what he remembers is that in Boston, this committee of men met in a church and they decided, okay, we will go to Governor Hutchison and we will explain our grievances about the tea and we will just ask him to make some changes. And he asked the committee members to come back and talk to him later. He said, I'll make an appointment with you. I'll talk to you at five o'clock. When they went, excuse me, when they got back to talk with him, he had left for his house in the country. He was gone. So they talked among themselves, what do we do to respond to this man who is putting us off, right? He can't even be bothered to meet with us at five o'clock. So they decided that they would um, put coal dust on their faces and get their tomahawks, and they would go down to the wharf, and they would speak to the captain of the three ships that were anchored there and tell them, we are coming to get this tea. And Mr. Hughes remembers that when he said that to the captain, the captain said, okay, you may have it. If you do not disturb the ship, do not interfere with the sails and the rigging. So Mr. Hughes remembers that they went, they got all the tea, it was stored in chest. Of course, it would have been in bricks of tea leaves. They cut up those chests with their tomahawks and they tossed that tea into the water. He does remember that a few people tried to get some of that tea and put it in their pockets. <laughs> and this was not at all pleasing to the men. One older man who had on a, a, a fancy hat and a white wig and he was trying to stick some in his coat pockets. And in fact, they rushed up to him and tore off his wig and his hat and threw it in the water. And <laughs> later, uh, Mr. Hughes remembers kind of tearing off his coat and putting it on the whipping post with a little indication of who had worn that coat and why they were so angry with him. So the Boston Tea Party is, according to the colonists, a way to prevent um, continuing to have to pay direct taxes. But when the message got to Parliament, of course in Britain, those parliamentarians thought, those naughty, naughty vandals, you know, they have destroyed this tea. And historians now estimate the value of that tea was over a million dollars. So, Parliament passed a series of acts, which they referred to as the Coercive Acts. The colonists called them the Intolerable Acts. They closed the Port of Boston to all shipping, so you're not gonna be making any money buying and selling as a merchant. They suspended the Massachusetts legislature. They were gonna place more troops in Boston. And this really is the beginning of the American Revolution in a major way, because for the first time after the Parliament passes the Intolerable Acts, delegates from 12 of 13 colonies meet together. That is the First Continental Congress. They come together in September 1774. Um, they decide they need to have a, have a militia, and they decide they're going to boycott British goods, etc. But you see that pattern of having the Continental Congress and then, of course, uh, dismissing that Congress and agreeing to meet again in the spring of 1775. By the time that Congress met in the spring of 1775, the fighting had begun 
first Lexington Green and then Concord when the colonists fired back as the British troops tried to cross the bridge over the North River there in, over the Concord River, excuse me, the old North Bridge over the Concord River. So the Tea Party really is the beginning of the colonists organizing in a major way and pushing back against the British and implementing some of the ideas that you all have already lifted up today, reminding us, for example, John Locke said government should only exist with the consent of the governed. And our colonial ancestors were saying, we didn't give our consent to any of these taxes. We're not represented in parliament. So the Boston Tea Party, a major event there that really launches that revolution. And I will pass around copies. Sorry that I don't have, I don't know. You have a wonderful group here today. I think 50, <laughs> and I think I have 35 copies. But um, as you celebrate the 250th anniversary of this party, just remember that it is an attempt on the part of the British to get revenue to help pay down the cost of the war. And Benjamin Franklin was a colonial agent actually in, um, in those years. And he went to London. He testified before Parliament in 1766 um, after that first act, that Stamp Act, had made so many people languish. And the Parliament, parliamentary interviewer was saying things like, aren't all the people in the colony prosperous? Aren't all of them able to pay these taxes? And Franklin was saying, no, especially people who live in the frontier colonies, um, where they interact with Native Americans so frequently. They don't, they don't have money. And plus, we already pay a lot of taxes. And so the interviewer said, well, what if we try to make them pay the taxes at the point of a gun? And Franklin said, you can't make them pay taxes at the point of a gun because they, uh, they won't be armed. And so you cannot shoot them. And then um, finally, Franklin says to them, if you continue to press in this direction, you will not find, excuse me, you will not find a rebellion, but you may make one. <laughs> so he was giving them fair warning. And yet um, those men, continued to press forward. And in other places, the tea was just not offloaded from the ships. But Boston is that most violent reaction where we do have um, absolute destruction of the tea. So does everyone have a copy? I had more copies than that. I need one. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So I'm sorry I cannot be with you on the um, 